You are watching this video because your battery terminal post is loose. How do I know it's loose? Well, if your vehicle suddenly doesn't start and it seems like it's dead, then either your battery's dead, and I that's what I thought for several months, but I'd charge it up and it was like the headlights would light right up, the dome lights would come right on. Everything, you know, you turn on your headlights, you got full headlights, everything's working, even the dogs are confused, and yet it won't start. So then I go and wiggle this terminal post, and it feels a little loose. Look at that, you can move it around. And then it's too loose where sometimes it doesn't have a good contact, and your car randomly won't start. It's just a simple little bolt like this one. They're very inexpensive. Now, my bolt is stripped. Your bolt might just need to be tightened. So get in there with your best tool. Don't strip the head of your bolt. My bolt is stripped because it came that way when I bought it. Not my fault. Look at how loose that is. You can even hear it. Hear that electricity in there? You might see a few sparks as it makes contact. So my truck randomly starts sometimes. sometimes. Look at how loose that is. It's terrible. So my bolt is stripped because it won't tighten any further than that. So this bolt has to be replaced. It's a $5 part. And uh, it's just a matter of taking this terminal post off and replacing that screw. But it's not easy. There's a little bit of extra thing you got to do. And I'll show you how. The black is the negative terminal and the red is the positive terminal. The red is more important because... If red makes a connection between the head of this, and you're going to pull the cap off just to see the nut. And you can see this one is tight in there. Look at how tight that is. I can't even move it. So that one is not the problem. But this is right here, the bolt that holds that in. I might have called it a nut. It's, it's the bolt that holds that into the side of the battery. Batteries have two kinds of terminal posts. Um, available. Some have both. Sometimes it's a terminal post that's up on the top and a clamp clamps onto that. That's probably the most common. Or you might have a side mount like this truck has. I have a 2004 Chevrolet uh, truck and they're pretty universal these, these Chevrolets. Um, but this is the one that has the side post. So because the positive in my case is secure I'm going to put that cap securely back on to cover that bolt so it doesn't touch the frame of the car. And I'm going to deal with just the negative terminal post. So the, really there's nothing you have to do other than carefully loosen that bolt, take it all the way out. I don't have the best tool available. Because we're in the process of moving and mo some of my tools are in storage or in the other garage of the place that we're currently living. Look at that. You get this far, you can finger loosen it. Okay, finish loosening that up and it comes right out. And that's what it looks like there. You can see too that it's fairly corroded so you do want to get some grease or even just oil and put it in there so it makes better contact and then uh, helps it fight corrosion. There's the uh, the new battery cable bolts. They're universal, I'm told, if they're the side bolt, like I have for this car. In this kit, I have two. If you're up to it and the weather's better than what I have, replace them both. Now, you'd think it'd be easy to just pull this bolt out and put the new one in, unfortunately. Nothing is that easy. <clears throat> the reason for that is this bolt is um, held in place by this rubber plastic or this rubber or plastic housing. And you can see that there's a rim around that bolt. See that rim? It's a wider head. And that fits inside of that. Uh, harness cap and so we're going to have to pull that out of there with some muscles. I'm going to try and just pull it out with a vice grip, get a firm hold on the top of that 
and give it kind of an angle. You just gotta force it out of there. And if it's, if the cable harness is old, it could crack, and it means you need a new one anyway. So be prepared for that. But you can just force it out of there, I kind of coax it out of there. And I, you can see where that, see where that lip on that bolt holds it in place. So you sneak one part out underneath when you go to put the new one in. I'll show you with the new one. But it was pretty easy to pull out of there, actually. The vice grip does most of the work by holding the head of the bolt. And all I had to do is give it a twist and, and coax it out of that housing. It is advisable to wear safety goggles when you're around batteries because batteries have, uh, have acid in it, although... Really, this is a sealed battery, so I'm not too worried about that. But uh, a battery can occasionally produce sparks, too. and You don't want a spark to the eye because burning your eye is a terrible injury because you kind of need your sight, right? The head of the bolt goes on this side of this harness because the flat side of the harness is what goes against the battery post. And you can see where that would connect to the battery post. Again, put a little uh, machine oil or grease in there. Grease is the best because it makes a better contact. All right, I'm finding that if I put one of the edges of this bolt underneath the rubber lip, then it starts to slide underneath. Getting it started is the hardest part. And this is why you want to be in a warmer environment because then the materials you're working with are a lot more... Uh, soft and easy to work with and there it's starting did you see that it started to get under once you start it getting underneath the rest of it should be a little easier to get it and the main thing is getting it underneath so that it holds it in place and you don't drop it down into your engine because lost parts in an engine can cause lots of damage I'm gonna get a screwdriver to help coax that into place there we go. I will admit, you have to just keep working with it until you get it to stick underneath. Now you're part way there. You still got to finish the battle by working that seal around it. Now if this was ice cold out in the weather, I guarantee it would never work. That's why I couldn't do it at the auto parts store because I was outside. And the dogs are excited because I'm finally making some progress on this truck. Then we can go for a ride. You can see this end. I do have it through uh, the metal connector. So it's holding it in place. So it's a matter of finishing off, getting it underneath that rubber. This is my first time doing this, as you can tell. And when you do it, it'll probably be your first time doing it. So patience is everything. You just gotta keep on trying to work it in there to get it completely within the shroud of the rubber uh, housing. Now you guys might have some experience or better ideas on how to do this i urge you to write those down in the comments below because that we can help each other through our experiences all right starting to make some progress getting that seal around there what we could do too is just like how i got it out get that vice grip in there lock it on channel lock lock it in place and then wiggle it in that way so we're going to try that and see how that works we can learn from each other and I'm, I'm showing you this the hard way in the first time because i like to show people that you at home can do things too you can if you put your mind to it it sometimes we can encourage each other sometimes when you're a first time inexperienced person doing a project and you see someone else who succeeds, like I am finally, that might encourage you to keep trying. 
is that when we watch a professional do something, it's easy to lose heart and uh, or someone who has a lot of experience at something. It's easy to lose heart and give up because they're good at it and you're not. The fact is, I am definitely not good at this, but I got it in there most of the way. And just through persistence and caution, I'm getting that puppy to get in there. I'm using simple tools. Now it needs to be straightened out a little bit, so I'm going to grab the other side without stripping those that bolt. Actually, I'm going to go from this side. I don't want to strip the screw head. See, it's through. It's enough to get to get it to connect to your battery. And once you uh, tighten this up to your battery, it's going to straighten itself out. But the trick here is to get it straight enough so it starts to go in. There. And if you're really struggling, then see that's the risk you take when you take this off your car is now disabled so you want to have a plan if you just can't get that thing to go in there like maybe have phone a friend maybe you have a friend who could come over and help you if you end up having trouble with this or have a different car available so you can still get around and go do the things you need to go do because when you've disconnected this you have disabled your vehicle until you get it straight. That's why you don't want to be out in the cold. Now, not everyone has the ability to uh, go into a warm garage. And so maybe uh, you want to do this on a warmer day. But the thing is, you can wait on some projects like this. You can wait until you have an opportunity and time in warmer weather or better conditions to work on something. You can see I got it on that side, and I have it on that side, and I have enough bolts sticking out to now connect it to the terminal. Okay, now it's going to spark when you first touch the battery. That's normal because you're making contact. It's not going to hurt your fingers if you're in there because the spark is between the bolt and the battery housing. There, now it's starting to go in. All right, so continue tightening. Be aware of where the rest of your harness is when you get tighter, because that's where it's gonna stay. And I'm gonna wanna work mine, basically you wanna work it so it's not touching anything else. And observe it before you start, because you have the advantage. I already started. You can observe where this is when it was tight when you started taking it out. I think right there looks pretty good because it's not going to touch any other part of the inside of the engine compartment. All right, let's continue tightening this down. And then you're going to go in your car and celebrate by resetting your clock because taking away power off your car means that all your components have no power. And if you have a newer car, you're going to want to check your owner's manual to see if what else needs to be reset. And with these computerized cars nowadays, there can be quite a bit. And your car might be so complicated that you'd want to ask your mechanic if, if you even should try this before, um, before you start. Because you might have to take your newer car to a service center. Because newer cars are very expensive that way. You have to take it to the dealership and spend tons of money on that very expensive car. This is why I like older cars. This one's a lot easier to work on. I can do a lot of this stuff myself. I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to make mistakes. I'm willing to take a risk as long as we don't cause damage to the vehicle engine. And I'm also willing to fail, meaning there's sometimes where you try and you just don't you just can't do it, but hey, at least you know you tried so that when you spend that couple hundred dollars on the mechanic, that it's money well spent. All right, without stripping the head, it's better to use a socket wrench set or even a channel lock to tighten this all the way. Now, the way you know you have it in there correctly is, look at how firm that is. I can actually move the battery around and there's no, it looks loose here, but 
it is not loose at the head of the bolt. You have a very good connection with your battery. Let's go see, after we've tightened this up all the way, as tight as you can without stripping the head of your bolt, like the guy before me on this vehicle did. And you can go to your vehicle and see if you have power. Well, the dome light came on, so that's a good sign. Uh, I know my battery's charged, so I'm gonna turn on the headlights real quick. Yep, they work. Put in the key. What I like to do, this is just personal preference, is first of all, turn turn off your radio and turn off your heating system so you're not using a whole bunch of power. I like to just let it sit and rest for a moment. And I made a critical mistake. And I'm doing it on purpose to show you. Haha, <laughs> so I say. No, I'm going to go back and make sure everything that I left sitting here, remember, I said don't leave, leave, leave tools in your engine compartment. Because once all the moving parts start moving around, you could actually do damage and you could get hurt, especially if something gets caught in there. Once the engine's running, don't get anywhere near any part of that inside the engine compartment because moving parts could actually catch your sleeve and suck you in there, or your hair, if you have long hair, could pull you in there that'd be a horrible way to die uh it'd be very painful at the very least so i have all my tools i only housed them right here i have a staging point it's either here or even better yet here because you can't shut your hood if there's something sitting there that's my favorite part to leave things but because i'm making a video i'm over here working today and it's also because of the lighting but if you're working with your any part of your battery, look at, I did it. I left a bolt there. So there it works. So this is a place where you're gonna triple check to make sure nothing is left because the latch of your hood is coming down here. And you wanna have, if you forgot, which you don't wanna do, you're gonna catch it when you can't shut that hood. That's also a place to check right before you actually do the final inspection. Uh, and so your engine is totally clear. I actually started up now that I've checked this before I shut the hood because I want to make sure everything's working. Fire's right up. The dogs think they're going for a ride. You want to go bye bye? Let's go for a ride. So it's important to say that when you're in here working around with tools, don't let your tool touch the positive side and the frame of the car because you'll have sparks like you've never seen before and then followed quickly by fire. It might even weld your tool to the metal, keeping that contact. So it's very important that if you're in here messing around, you don't ever let your tool touch the head of the battery and the frame of the car at the same time. There you have it. That's how you reconnect uh, or replace the bolt to your terminal. I have a side post. It's a lot harder to do it on this one than it is with a post terminal. And so you have to buy a new bolt. It's five bucks, maybe seven. I saw different prices. And uh, they're pretty universal in size. You take out the other bolt. The hard part that I showed you and talked a lot about is getting it out of this housing. It's not easy to get the new one back in, but with persistence, you can make it happen, especially if it's not ice cold. That's why you want to get this maintenance done before winter comes. If And I knew this was coming, but I didn't know what the problem was. I thought my battery was dead. I took it in and they said my battery is fairly new and it doesn't need to be recharged. So I had a post problem that your mechanic probably could help you with. But if you're willing to take the chance and try and possibly fail, hey, at least you learn a new skill. If you like the help I gave, uh, make a comment below. Thumbs up. If you have something you saw that I did wrong, please put it in the comments because other people can learn from each other's mistakes and from your experience. Thanks for watching Frosty Life.